Together for a better future. Drops for Antigua and Barbuda. Cast and Drongo deliver. Cast and Drongo deliver. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort or convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The words of Martin Luther King Jr. The act of leadership is doing the right things. It's creative. It's visionary. It's a dazzling array of skills that are inspiring and humanizing. Leadership is intelligence with humility. It's a commitment to change, meaningful change. Leadership is adaptability, boldness, global, honorable, and commitment. From VC Bird and the Founding Fathers, a new generation is now taking its rightful place. The mandate for a new era. Our own Gaston Brown. Gaston Brown spent his early childhood years in the care of his grandmother in Parliament Street, Grace Farm. Many in the neighborhood still remember him as a young man who displayed leadership qualities even back then. Let me say first, I am not a Labour supporter. That's the man who was born in Parliament Street, Grace Farm, just across this road, as Parliament Street. We used to play as boys. He, was, he usually engaged in draft and dominant. He was a very good draft player. Gaston Brown possessed all the characteristics of a good leader. And I will endorse Gaston Brown as the leader of the anti Barbuda Labour Party. When he was about eight years old, Gaston left Grace Farm and went to live with his mother in the Point area. There, he did much of the things that boys did, and he forged a close relationship with Roger Beek, who recalls advising Gaston that he was destined for great things. Me personally is not surprised. Ever since I was a little boy, he had that positive attitude. I know his will, very strong. Probably get influenced by the area that he grew up in, and his will to succeed, very, very great. Gaston Brown grew up in conditions of abject poverty. Growing up with his grandmother, there were many nights where he went to bed hungry. Following his secondary school education, Gaston found employment at the Swiss American Bank, where he excelled in his career in banking. And uh, let me start by saying that I consider myself to be an ordinary person, someone who is dedicated to serve and empower the people of this country. To give you a little background, I actually started as a banker. I did 13 years in the banking industry. The last five years, I served as a senior manager at the Swiss American Banking Group. In fact, during that period, I had in, the, in excess of $400 million in assets under my management. And I believe that I served with distinction based on the appraisals that I had while serving at the bank. In fact, I was largely credited with the, or given the praise for that matter, for the individual who actually saved the bank from bankruptcy. I recall back in 1994, the Central Bank did an audit of the bank at the time. They audited about 70% of the bank's assets and 58% were found to be toxic. At that time, I was just promoted into management and over a period of about a year, I had to put in on average about 12 hours a day to rewrite a number of loans and literally to chase a number of delinquent creditors in order to bring down the level of delinquency. And we're successful, along with my team, of course, in reducing the level of delinquency from 58% down to 2% when I left the bank in 1999. So that is one of the credits that I had and certainly continue to promote as part of my CV. I also had the opportunity, even prior to that, of serving in various capacities in the bank and I was given the opportunity as well to be fast-tracked into the management pool. In fact, I'm the only member of the Swiss American Banking Group who was given a scholarship by the bank to pursue a degree in banking, which I did and completed in 1993. In fact, I had the opportunity of qualifying within the top 20 of several thousand students who did those examinations. And I also 
got the highest mark in the world for monetary economics. I got a special prize for that particular performance. So my career as a banker was certainly a very successful one. As a young man, Gaston had a strong desire to succeed and to do well. At the time he began his banking career, he started a parallel career in business. I also became a businessman when I was about 20 years of age, so that I now have about 25 years experience in the private sector. So while I was working at a bank, I was also conducting private business, obviously without creating any conflict with my job. In fact, the first business I actually got involved in at the time was a car company. Uh, we had a Subaru, Subaru dealership, myself and two others, uh, namely Steve Joseph. Um, he actually is the late um, CJ's, I think it's CJ's I call him, Joseph at the Westbus Station Sun, as well as um, this gentleman on Old Palm Road, and Nathaniel Maynard. You'd recall that there was a Subaru dealership on Old Palm Road. In fact, I was really the key person in that particular business. And um, at the age of 20, I was involved in a car company and was a major shareholder in that particular company, directing its affairs. Unfortunately, after we expanded it to include other shareholders, um, greed had set in and I took a principal decision at the time that I preferred to step out. And that is why I eventually left that particular company because I felt at the time that the whole thrust of the company was not in keeping with the initial um, thrust, which was to produce or to provide the people of this country with a low-cost vehicle. Gaston was doing well in his careers as a banker and as a young entrepreneur. The year was 1998. General elections were due the following year. The people of St. John City West needed a new candidate. Many eyes focused on Gaston Brown. Gaston felt that he needed to hear from some of the people with whom he grew up in the area. My name is Peter Wazaka Thomas, alias as Peter Wang, as most people know me as. You know, no glass I'm from as a youngster growing up. For some reason, I lost shock of him when he went and lived with his grandmother, then after he surfaced back a couple of years after. Last time, tell me a few years ago, prior to, to um, 1999, that he was going to enter politics. And I said to him, Glaston, what the reason you want to enter politics when you already have a good life? He said, no way. You cannot measure success from what you accomplish. You have to measure success from who you help in life because you accomplish, your accomplishment do not mean a lot to you after you get done in life because you will find yourself with the same community as a youngster growing up remain the same. So you tell me you have to get involved in politics so you can make a difference in people's life. After securing the support of Peter Thomas, Gaston also needed to hear the voice of his childhood friend, Roger. Well, I remember when he come by me and he rap on the house exciting. Harley, we call him, and I keep saying Gaston, but at the time it was Harley. And he came and he rap on the house and he said, Peek, 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 you know what? Cushy was, was the nickname back then. He said, Cushy, Cushy, you know what? And before you open me mouth, I say, you, you'll be a politician. And he said, how you know? I tell him, I just dream it. I just know is that you're going to do. Here's Gaston, in his own words, explaining how the people of his community convinced him to enter representative politics. In 1999, I was approached by members of my community to go forward politically. At that time, I really had no political inclination because at the time, I was making $16,000 monthly and was quite comfortable. I mean, you probably would be aware that I grew up in poverty. So I've had a situation in which I was then making $16,000 a month. I mean, that was a major improvement for me. And I felt that, um, you know, getting involved in politics may not have been the best thing to do, considering that I would have had to take a pay cut. However, there are individuals in the community who, I would say, after several attempts, were able to convince me to go forward politically. Fortune favored Gaston Brown. He was elected to Parliament in 1999 in his first electoral campaign. He was appointed to the Ministry of Planning, where he performed beyond expectation. So in 1999, I entered electoral politics and won my seat at that time. Now I can tell you very clearly that my intention from the onset, and it is still my mantra today, 
is to, is to serve and empower. I had the opportunity to serve for five years. And even though I was relatively new, and the fact too that I was given a ministry that had little opportunity, I was able to turn what was considered at the time a non-ministry, the ministry of planning, into easily one of the most vibrant, if not the most vibrant ministry in the ALP administration between 2000, or between 1999 and 2004. And it is from that particular experience that I believe I would have earned the respect of the people of this country as a very effective minister. During his only term as a member of a government, Gaston can boast of a number of significant achievements. Here are some of his achievements as highlighted by Peter Thomas. I see the, I see the, the, uh, the Pine Dwarf, that is one. I see the ICT Center. I see the, the football field. Quite often, as a society, we measure a man's achievements by his successes in business or in politics. But what of Gaston the man and a father? His fiancée, Maria Bird, tells us more. He is an extraordinary individual. He's loving, he's kind, he's a passionate person, he cares about the people. He's what I will call a natural humanitarian. He loves the people of Antigua and Barbuda. He's always eager to help. And if one thing about Gaston, his word is his bond. That's who he is. If he tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And I admire that about him. I think that's a strong leadership quality. Um, another thing, um, Gasson is always very firm about his positions. I also see him to be a very honest person. He will call a spade a spade. Um, he's very, very well educated and experienced for the part of leadership. He is a humble person, um, a very good father and fiance, of course. Together, Gas and I have a nine-month-old baby boy, Prince Gasson, and he is a very sweet bundle of joy. Antigua and Barbuda is going through tough times. The economy has stagnated. Unemployment is high. Crime is on the rise. More families are going to bed hungry. The people in the country are losing hope. Against this background, the delegates of the Antigua Labour Party are meeting on November 25th to select a new leader. Gaston Brown is a candidate for the position of political leader. At the end of the day, I want to make sure that um, I use the rest of my life to empower people. And I recognize that if that particular objective of empowering people is going to be materialized to its fullest, then clearly I need to have the power to do it. And this is where the, 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 let's say the leadership of the party in the first instance comes into play, as well as the leadership of the country. So that some people may misconstrue, you know, my desire to serve as being power hungry. It has nothing to do with power hungry. In fact, as my constituents have said to me, I am empowerment hungry. This is a special appeal to all the delegates of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party Convention on the 25th of November to vote in favour of the Honourable Gaston Brown for the leadership of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. What are the qualities of a good leader? This is a critical question for the delegates of the Antigua Labour Party. The new leader of the ALP must be able to reach out to independents as well as ALP supporters. Here are Gaston's friends giving their full support. All leaders must be somebody who you can identify with, you hear? And leaders mustn't be a leader uh, for his constituency alone. He must be the leader of the country. Gaston Brown has assembled a team of advisors working on plans for the economic development of Antigua and Barbuda. One of these advisors is Saeed Green. The appeal that, that I want to make on behalf of the candidacy of Gaston Brown for leadership of the Antigua Labour Party is that for our seniors, it is right that you drape your arms around his shoulder and give him the blessing. For parents, we must begin to look to the future to ensure that we preserve the legacy of the work that has been so well begun in the Antigua Labour Party. And to the young people and delegates, we are asking you 
to cast your vote for the future, for the development, prosperity, and the continual forward thrust of a Caribbean civilization that the Antigua Labor Party for over six decades have been so involved in making in shaping. And we have no doubt that Gaston Brown will continue this great work. Our best days in Antigua and Barbuda are ahead of us with the election as our new leader to the Antigua Labor Party in Gaston Brown. I ask you to vote for Gaston Brown on the 25th of November. It is the best decision that we will ever make collectively so that we can rescue the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. And as we say, the mantra, back to work with labor. What of the Honorable Lester Byrd? What would be his role with Gaston Brown as the leader of the Antigua Labor Party? Gaston Brown as the leader of... All of our comrades, all Antiguans and Barbudans, that the Honorable Lester Byrd would be taken care of. I want them to understand that the Honorable Lester Bird, no matter what you think about him, he would have made the second largest contribution to his socioeconomic advancement of this country. And I think that having made that success, <clears throat> sorry, those contributions, that we have to take care of him. We have no choice but to take care of him. We have to make sure that he enjoys his golden years. November 25th is decision time. Much is at stake at this convention. Not only the future of the party, but the future of Antigua and Barbuda. The Honorable Gaston Brown makes a special appeal to the delegates of the ALP convention. I want to say to all the delegates that to achieve a win at the next general elections, you must have a leader who has the energy and the determination to make a difference. A party with a leader who does not have the energy who does not have the health and strength to lead us, will not make it. We cannot be sentimental about the governance of this country. We cannot, cannot be sentimental about the governance of the Antigua Labour Party. We must do what is in the best interest of the Antigua Labour Party. And I'm saying to you that under Gaston Brown leadership, you can be assured that we will win the next general elections. I have the experience, I have the qualifications, the competence, and the commitment to lift this party and to make sure we reposition the Anti-Labor Party to win the next general elections. I therefore humbly ask for your support at the upcoming, upcoming um, convention. Sing this song from country to town. We're going with Gaston Brown.